run away into Oncton to explore one of Staffordshire's most famous legends. When I decided that I'd be doing this story, I didn't realise that the uh, that the story took place in the autumn of 1821. So that makes the the legend almost exactly 200 years old. Ambry Hill, which you can just see in the distance, sits in the southwest corner of Alton Towers, near Cloud Cuckoo Land and just behind the towers themselves. 2,000 years ago, an Iron Age fort was built on top of that hill. Some 800 years later, King Selarad, a Saxon king, built a fortress in almost exactly the same spot. In 716 AD, the King of Wessex besieged the fort, which led to a truly awful and bloody battle. The battle itself ended in stalemate, but such a death toll was accrued that the site of the battle became known as Slain Hollow. Slain Hollow is now the site of the tower's oriental winter gardens. Three hundred years later, a Norman castle was built in the village of Alton. It's about a mile away from where the towers are today. In 1406, Sir John Talbot acquired the estate when he married Maud, the eldest daughter of Thomas de Furnival. And in 1442, he became the first Earl of Shrewsbury. Two hundred years later, the castle was destroyed during the English Civil War. In the 17th century, the former castle was redeveloped into a hunting lodge. The lodge was split into two main properties. One was rented by a tenant. The other half was used by the Talbots as a summer residence. In 1801, Charles Talbot, the 15th Earl of Shrewsbury, decided that the old Alton Castle was beyond repair. So he decided to have work started on a Gothic-style stately home on his estate. In 1814, Charles and his wife permanently moved into their house at Alton. On a cold and windy autumn night in 1821, Charles Tongvert, the 15th Earl of Shrewsbury, was returning to his home, Alton Towers. An old man appeared in the road. The coach driver stopped to acquire what the old man wanted. The Earl, hearing the talking, leaned out of the coach window to see what was going on. The beggar told the Earl that he wanted the charity of a coin. The Earl, being a cruel man, harshly dismissed the beggar and told the coach driver to hurry on. The beggar, knowing of the Earl's wealth, was angry at being dismissed and shouted a curse after the Earl. At every branch of the old oak tree that falls, a member of your family will die. Earl being a sensible and pragmatic man, dismissed this and carried on home. Later the same night, a storm moved in, the rain got heavier, the winds grew louder and faster, and a single branch from the old oak tree fell. The next morning, the Earl received two pieces of news. The first bit of news was that a branch from the old oak tree had fallen in the night, blocking the road. The second bit of news the Earl received was that a member of his family had suddenly and strangely, mysteriously, died in the night. Remembering the old man's curse, the Earl ordered that every branch on the old oak tree be chained up so as they couldn't possibly fall. 15th Earl of Shrewsbury himself died just six years later.
So there you have it. That's the legend of the chained oak. There's the tree. And this is the path that the Earl's coach would have followed. This path leads straight to the lodge, across Farley Lane and into the towers. There are many variations of the story. One, that it was an old woman, not an old man, that cursed the Earl. Another variation is that the legend concerns the 16th Earl of Shrewsbury, but he was known as Good Earl John, so his reputation doesn't fit that of the legend. On the 9th of April 2007, one of the tree's main branches fell. The Tongbuk family confirmed that no one in the family had died. Everybody believes that the legend of the chained oak is a true story and I can find no evidence to the contrary. So am I saying that curses are real? Of course not. It was probably just one of them horrible coincidences where an old beggar miffed at being turned down for the chance of a coin from a wealthy man hurled a curse after the coach and later that same night, by pure coincidence, a member of the Earl's family tragically died. What can be said though? This path and the surrounding woodland is very haunting. It's got a very mysterious feel to it. I'd love to come back here with the team do a bit of an investigation at night just to see what we can pick up. alton has got loads of other ghost stories and legends, stories of witchcraft, so you never know. Maybe you'll see a fun and proper episode of Urban Ghost Stories around these beautiful woods to see if we can find the spirit of the Earl of the beggar, or maybe some of the sinister goings on involved in witchcraft. I hope you've enjoyed this short story, and if you'd like to see more of them, Staffordshire and the surrounding areas have got loads of myths and legends. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so you get notifications every time we drop a new video, and leave us message in the comments tell us what you think about the tale of the chained oak do you think it's a, a true story do you think the curses are real if you don't subscribe i curse you to wake up every morning with a belly button full of fluff if tomorrow your belly button is oozing strange blue fluffy stuff to the channel and hit that subscribe button.